Hello, it's Heather the Painter here, and today I am going to show you how to use Corel Painter 2021 in a Wacom Intuos Pro medium tablet with the standard pen that comes with it, and the brushes that come with Painter 2021, and creating a painting from something that commonly comes up with especially photographers and artists. A client or a friend provides a cell phone image, and a lot of times it is not the best resolution or it's out of focus or there's not a lot of information in the subject, but there are ways to make a phenomenal art piece out of it just with a few little tips and some very unique brushes that Corel Painter 2021 provides. So to get started, I have made sure that the image has a basic standard default uh, color management, a uh, color profile. And I turned this one into an sRGB profile just because most labs will want it to be either sRGB or Adobe 98 RGB. Uh, I know the lab that I print with will want an sRGB file just in case we go to print with this. Now this was taken on a, I believe an iPhone 8 Plus. Uh, don't judge, it is an older camera, but that is all I can work with right now. So my little one and I were scouting a location for her portrait that was gonna take place the next day. And I love, images where there are not like the smiley pearly teeth showing. I find that they're more, they make up more of an ethereal portrait. So I really like the lines here. I love anytime there are triangles in an image. Uh, they are, they just break up um, a static subject. So I really like the lines. I like where she's looking off. I like that are that are lines from the background that are leading into her. And there's just a lot of interest here. And to me, this is so her. Um, she's just very much <laughs> this ethereal little creature. So I'd love to show you how I would uh, paint this in Corel Painter 2021. Now these techniques do apply in older versions of Painter and they apply in other software as well. So go ahead, grab a cup of hot tea and come join me in this several part series. Now I've brought it in, you'll see it comes in as a canvas. And the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our size, our color profile are okay before we start painting. So I've gone up to canvas, canvas size, and I can see automatically it's 30 by 24 by 40 by 32. So to really dumb it down, if you just move your decimal point over two points, that tells me I could technically get a 30 by 40 print, a 30 inch by 40 print out of this. I would not do that from a cell phone image unless it were fully painted with a lot of work to it. Now this is a very good rule of thumb in the DSLR world uh, for photographers out there. If you just move your decimal point over two points, assuming the image has a great capture, things are in focus, your lighting was spot on, and just the elements are all in place, that will tell you that, yeah, you can get a 30 by 40 of that. But when it's a cell phone image, eh, that's kind of pushing it. So since it's a cell phone image, you know, I would be thrilled to get an 11 by 14 out of this. So I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to go over to resize and let's see. I'm not worried about my resolution uh, placement here because if we move any of our numbers around, they're just going to switch the distribution. I'm not worried about that. So I'm not worried about numbers. I'm going to keep this as the, at the highest resolution we can possibly maintain it. I don't want to shrink it down any. I actually really like the crop and camera. If I wanted to give it some extra space at the bottom, I'm going to actually add to the canvas. Let's go to canvas size. And at the bottom, I'm going to add, let's say 500 pixels to the bottom. And I'm going to add a few more to the left. Let's say 120. And that gives me a little bit more room. I really like these tall, uh, long pieces for paintings, especially when the person is not looking directly at you with a classical smile. I just find that they are a little bit stronger in composition. I like her in that lower left corner. 
Um, and I can always crop out some of the top if I need to. But I find when I paint looser, I want a little bit more space at the bottom to give myself some freedom and not, you know, come at an edge when I'm painting one of those loose streamers. So I've added some space. Now I do need to go in, I'm zooming in by hitting on a Mac, it's Command Plus. On a PC, it's going to be Control Plus. Uh, I do need to define, if you look really closely, because it was done from a cell phone, the planes in her face, meaning, you know, where the cheek meets the nose, where the nose meets that little bump, where the nose and the uh, her forehead meet her um, eyebrow line, uh, all of the bone and face plane structures, things that define and show you her face, you know, that is her. They've kind of blurred into this mass of almost the same value. So if you kind of squint your eyes down and you look at her, we are almost at a very small limited value. And that is going to make for a very waxy, boring painting. So the more I can add separation to the planes, meaning I can clearly define my highlights, clearly define my shadows, clearly define my midtones. You know, think of your value scale from dark to light. If you can clearly define those in a painting, especially on the face, it will be more interesting. So what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to make sure that I've got a backup of this, and this is not my only original, as I've already saved this as my original. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my canvas by going to layers duplicate. So I have a canvas layer above and I'm going to do a little bit of editing here with the dodge tool. I've made it fairly small and I want to, she's got the cutest nose in the world I think. I'm going to go ahead and define, whoops, define her nose. And this will come in handy when we're painting later. I'm going to undo those. I keep that at white. It will come in handy later when we start cloning because we really need the separation of values on the planes of the face. I'm going to get that little bump in the lip. If I go slightly overboard, that's okay. I just don't want to move any of these elements. So you're looking, you're squinting down, you're looking for anywhere that there's that highlight and you're just exaggerating it. Too much. Now this brush is a little, <coughs> excuse me, pressure sensitive. So I'm using the dodge tool, dodge. And we can click on and off with that top layer to make sure that we're not changing her face too much because if you go overboard, it will change their likeness. And the person you're painting this for may not appreciate that. I love this top light right here, especially that little glow. I'm going to bring it down. So now we have a little bit more backlighting. And these tiny, subtle things that you're doing make a huge difference when it's time to go and paint your image. So always, always spend time in prepping your file first and don't skip this part. So this can be in any editing software that you want. Just make sure it happens. I'm going to turn my bleed all the way up to 100. Here we go. We see a little bit more definition, definition and lighting on her face now. now I'm going to try to keep everything in Corel Painter today. A little bit more light back here. You can see my dark values have all gone mushy. Woo, too much. If I put too much pressure, I actually get a brush stroke down and that's not what we want. It's 
So you can see already we have a bit more definition between highlights and midtones. Now let's go in with our burn brush, burn tool, which will darken areas. And I'm going to take this down to about 10% opacity. Make it a little bit smaller and go into shadow areas. And go ahead and over exaggerate those, especially that little bump on the nose. And this is just, again, giving me separation of those planes on the face. Not doing much, but just that little tiny bit. Give it a little bit more interest and that's already giving you something else to paint other than this big flattened uh, plane. Oops, I went too hard there. Now if you go overboard anywhere, the wonderful thing about working with layers is you can add a layer mask, which is this icon down here. Come down here. It doesn't matter what brush you're on as long as it's something that will lay down color and it's not simply a blender. So I can go to Real Soft Conte. I think that was the last brush I was on. And when you're working with a layer mask, you want to be working with black or white. Black is going to hide it. White is going to reveal. It doesn't matter if you're working with color. That just won't apply here. So we want to make it all the way to black. And I'm going to clean up that area at a high opacity. And it just hides it out. It masks it out. There we go. So already it looks like I've given her a little bit more light in her face. And then I'm going to clean up this just a bit. And I'm going to take a light opacity and just lightly go over top. So it's a little bit more subtle. Much better. So before, after, before, after. I cannot stress this enough to do not forget the step before going into a painting. And then let's save. And there is a big storm going on outside. <laughs> File, save as. And I'm going to name her uh, Prep Shia Outdoors. And I'm going to save this as a Photoshop, uncompressed, leave the rest checked, save. That way I can move in and out of other software if I need to. And with the interpretation I'm going to cover on this, it's going to be fairly heavy. Uh, anytime I paint cell phone images, I encourage the person that's purchasing the image or that wants the image to go for a heavier, almost slightly more abstract style because it, there's just not a lot of information in the face you can see compared to a DSLR image. And I personally love painting more free and more loosely. So we are going to cover painting heavily in the next segment.